Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The 10 tips to developing your personal brand through thought leadership. Now, I know you're a consultant and a coach or a small business owner that is looking to grow their brand and to actually um, make more money with less struggle. And I know and I understand that you know within your industry, becoming an expert is one of those converted things and is one of those things that you need to be in order for people to buy from you because people buy from the best in the industry. Now, have you ever noticed that there are restaurants that people actually line up for and there's products that people pre-order in months in advance? I bet the iPhone or the Android that you're listening to this podcast on, you would have pre-ordered it or you would have gone in and maybe waited in line for it. If you didn't, at least you were checking out the reviews well in advance before you went out and bought this product, you know? There are festivals that have tickets that sell out, you know, just on the day that they're released or events, you know, like marathons where people hang out outside, you know, the website for a 30 minute window for them to just purchase those tickets. Have you ever asked yourself why that is? You know, have you ever asked yourself why a lot of people seem to be closing deals and going on holidays and living La Vida Loca and you just seem to be having a tough time just getting people to like your tweets. Well, becoming an, an expert doesn't happen overnight. And it's something that you got to work towards. And in this podcast, I'm going to try and give to you the 10 tips that you need to develop your own personal brand and, um, you know, how thought leadership will actually put you amongst the top in your industry. Now, what criteria... Uh, necessary to be deemed a thought leader in your industry. Have you ever thought of that? The people that are, you know, celebrated in your industry, what are they doing? How do they show up? What do their websites look like? What do their landing pages look like? What do their lead magnets um, give so that, you know, they get all this notoriety and celebrity status that they get? Because the answers might vary, you know, maybe being a consultant or a coach or something of that nature. Most people can actually agree that it does, however, take a complex series of experiences, um, you know, that we all have to go through so that we can be, do, and have the success that we are uh, looking for, all right? So it's your life story, your experiences, and your expertise that then people come to the table for, because half of the time you will notice that all the content that's out there is plus or minus the same. Okay, but what are the setbacks? What are the things that will make you rethink or redesign or restart, you know, whatever it is that you already have? Because your thought process has to be reconditioned in order for you to start growing your business so that it is profitable and enjoyable. And I know the biggest problem that you have as an entrepreneur Marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You got to hire new staff, manage them, balance the books, grow, and all those things that come along with running a business. And it feels like a consistent, you know, balancing act where you're pulled in multiple directions all at once. But once you master your craft, your successes will eventually start speaking for themselves. Now, this process is how a lot of thought leaders are born. And it's not a linear process where you start today or like what they show us in Hollywood where somebody is born 
and then they go to kindergarten and then they go to high school from high school they get their first love from the getting their first love they you know they get engaged and then they go to university and once they engage to the university they get married and then they get a job and then they get a promotion and then pretty much after that they you know have two and a half kids and then they get a disease and then they die all in a 45 minute episode plus commercials it doesn't work like that so the, the process of how thought leaders are born is exactly um you know what i will outline in the 10 tips that i'm going to give you uh below but thought leaders cannot rely solely on just word of mouth of their business you literally have to become top notch in your industry you have to be remarkable and people should know like and trust you um as as a you know as an experienced person in your industry and at the end of, and at the end of the day your real goal is to help your clients you want to spend as much time as possible changing lives and solving people's problems you don't want to waste it countless hours each week trying to navigate the complex world of maybe online marketing or gaming the social media algorithms and suddenly you don't want to spend another minute on the phone having to beg people to come to your services if you become a thought leader within your industry you don't have to do all of these things okay you see I, i don't even need to do these things all i have to do is sit down for 30 minutes each and every day do a podcast like this and i have partnerships people clear, you know calling me and saying hey i heard your stuff that you spoke about on the podcast can we implement that in my business you know i, I still have a long list of clients who want to work with me it's not because i'm a genius it's not because i'm a master of persuasion either it's because i follow a simple system that works and that simple system is what i'm going to lay out to you in the 10 steps below the first thing that you got to do is define and refine your area of expertise what do you want to be known for so this step might just seem a little obvious but most people have a wide range of interests and vast knowledge have ever seen a lot of consultants on linkedin have an alphabet soup um you know of credentials cia cpa see this that or mba all of those things it is good and well to your colleagues and to people that understand what that is but your customers are looking for some transformation what is it that that you are going through right now that you can absolutely help your clients with that they're struggling with and you have a solution for you know what is it that your clients are going through what pain points do they have because being a thought leader requires a narrow focus in a specific area you'll be best served to whittle down all your options in a specific um you know area of expertise if you're going to be a heart surgeon You don't want people to come to you for a broken toe because that's not your area of expertise. So there's some contention regarding whether or not, you know, your subject area needs to be distinctive or maybe over addressed. Now, here's one way to look at this issue. Even a popular industry has room for an authentic expert who brings knowledge to the table. And if you are needed and you're an innovator in your field, people will gravitate to you and they will listen to whatever it is that you've got to say all right you no longer are a wandering generality you are now a meaningful specific and if somebody has problems or if somebody needs a specific solution they are not going to take their books their accounting books to an hr consultant so you want to you know state your claim and really show people how you can help them by actually helping them and being specific because people people are bombarded with options out there and the last thing you want to be doing is confusing them when they show up to your website just pick one lane and then when they do show up and they signed up to be your customer or something like that then you would then uh, turn around and say hey now that you're here would you like fries with that you know lead in with something simple that is easy for people to understand and grasp what it is that you do so that when they speak to their friends and relatives at a barbecue at least they have one reference point instead of ah, you know he kind of does everything but i don't quite know what he does and that is bad for business 
And once you're doing that, you want to be building your background and continuing your education. The best way to actually make sure you're continuing your education is to share what you have learned. The reason why a lot of people are not you know, growing besides just what their education stipulates is because they're not sharing enough of the content. Because if you're showing up for a podcast like this every single day, you ask yourself, wait a minute, who am I to be documenting my journey? Or who am I to be giving reference to things like this? So I back myself with books. And the more I continue my education, guess what happens? I feel very confident that if I'm not sure about something or a certain topic, we could always look it up. So you want to build your background and continuously educate yourself because people are coming to the internet to get information. And if they're getting that information from you, guess what happens? They get to know you, like you, and trust you. And as we all know, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. So now it's sort of time to look at your work. I mean, it's your job to become highly proficient in your industry and you must invest time and money into your education by maybe going to seminars listening to podcasts like this or attending conferences or courses that you know enhance your education status you must also read ferociously like i'm saying and you need to understand the stance of you know other leaders in your in your field you know because having a considerable wealth of perspectives in your own subject will actually help you develop your own unique approach from the expertise of others because your life story and your experience of greater value than what your educate formal education brings people are here to hear your stories how did you um you know go through certain problems how do you encourage people's dreams because you've gone through that same thing that they're going through themselves how do you justify people's failures because you've also failed that's what your prospects are yearning to listen to and hear and when you start having these different perspectives, you start having different conversations. And when you have different conversations, you become interesting. And when you become interesting, people become interested in you. R write that down. It's actually really good. When you become interesting, people become interested in you. All right. And once you've got that, you've got interesting um, perspectives to share. Find the best platform to share your message. So you need to take stock, you know, and figure out, wait a minute, am I good at video? Am I good at talking? Am I good at writing? Am I good at TikToks? What are you actually good at? And then capitalize on that. I've discovered I'm really good at talking. So I literally sit down and do a podcast every single day. So it goes on for about 30 minutes or so. And then that podcast turns into a blog. And then we, I mean, we transcribe the podcast and then we turn it into a blog. And then once it's turned into a blog, we now take snippets of that blog into social media posts. So because I only just have to shoot one bed with five stones, is, is that the right way to say it? Shoot one bird with five stones. I literally have content that is just coming out of every other you know place because my team then chops it up and takes snippets of this and actually utilizes it so that we can go into different um, avenues. So with so many ways to get your word out there, you know, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, podcasting, like we're doing blogging and, and so much more. It's essential to just pick what platform that will retain the most growth for you. And the trick is you only need to be good at one. Like I was saying with, with, with podcasting and instead of trying to be average at all, just deep dive into one and select the best platform where your message and skills can be utterly amplified and then use the other ones um you know to replicate your content and just to 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 pass on the message and engage and educate your audience out there all right i'm going to talk a little bit about podcasting because for me i realized podcasting a little bit late i was just thinking to myself maybe i'm not really good at this but I kid you not, I just bought a microphone and that's the only fancy equipment that I have. And I record this podcast on Audacity, which is a free tool that you can download from the internet. And then I just chop up. I got the uh, beginning of the podcast and the outro done um, by one of my... Um, you know, team members, and then they, they already, you know, make it sound good and 
pretty much that's about it so i want you to be maybe choose a platform but maybe if you want to become a pod, podcaster because it's one way to promote your notoriety as a thought leader and um, because you own the media you own the content and podcasts have become very alluring to the general public you know the big draw of of podcasts is the mobility aspect of it look at you ni- right now you're probably at the gym you're probably walking your dog Uh, if you're in the toilet uh, flush or wash your hands after you're done but you, you can be anywhere and still be consuming content all right you can listen from your device anytime from just about anywhere you are and adding this type of accessibility to yourself um and to your brand can actually become a game changer now i'm doing this i do the podcast and when the podcast is i actually send an email to my audience i'm not out there trying to search for people that have never heard of me to Uh, you know download the podcast i'm actually creating an environment of content that will then um you know be or help my audience to actually solve the problems that they have remember what i said at the, at the, at the start of this podcast at the end of the day your real goal is to help your clients now if i can help them make sense of the world around themselves while they're doing whatever they're doing guess what everybody wins you know And if you can't do the whole podcasting thing, try and be an author or like a guest poster or something like that. Because the more articles you write in your area of expertise, the more SEO instances you get to have. You know, and the the wider your audience becomes. Because if you now start add, you know, continual content, you know, showing that you are relevant and you're fresh and you've got new ideas that warrant you know debate or whatever it is your your name gets out there and you actually begin to establish your authority you, you can't establish authority with tiktoks because they they only what a 10 second um view maybe they can if you're using them as a lead generator to drive them to your profiles or to your podcast not just it being a means to an end All right, and if you really want us to help you out with your content and to uh, syndicate all of that content, you don't need to sacrifice your income to do what you love. You can actually have both. I can walk you through our simple step-by-step um, you know, plan, and then I can show you exactly how I'm managing to just sit down once and have this content redistributed to a lot more platforms, and you can still be able to uh, connect with me on a daily b- basis at scale while I'm playing with my kids all right so if you if you really want to take it right now go and look at my stories on facebook okay i go by the same name prosper taroninga if you look at my stories on facebook while you're listening to this podcast i'm probably playing with my kids or doing something fun in my office all right so your content then helps to leverage your message or if you publish a book I I've published ebooks I've never actually published um a book but if you publish publish a book or an ebook on your topic it's also a great way to widen your audience and it builds status within the industry because you know people start referring to your book as that little um you know non committal sort of step that they're going to take before they commit to you know and then maybe your consulting services or something like that and once you have content let me tell you something you build a social media audience that you can actually start performing to because it's like theater you know you can't perform to an empty stage or an, i mean to an empty audience you know when you're on stage you need an audience and you need to build it up by being relevant by contributing by actually engaging and educating your audience and providing value because we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace so when you're building your personal brand don't underestimate the power of social media and being a devoted social media contributor is almost essential these days because if you if it hasn't happened on facebook it hasn't happened in the world Do you know what I mean? That's how people are approaching the internet. Um, you know, or approaching their lives every single day. No one is buying the newspaper anymore. They are reaching out for their phones the first thing first first thing when they wake up in the morning. All right? And equally important is the frequency on how you post. So posting each and every day on your social media is also a great way to quickly establish your your presence because it gives people a reason to follow you. 
It gives people a reason to want to know more and hang, um, you know, on the edge of their seats, wanting to know what you're going to post again tomorrow. And obviously your presence eventually becomes known throughout uh, the industry and people start coming uh, to you to, to get answers whenever something is happening in your industry. But also, I want to emphasize that you need to be producing high quality content that actually helps your audience. You want to be helping your audience by actually helping them. I bet this podcast is filled with stuff that if you were actually listening, I told you how I, I run my podcast. I told you what I do with the content and how we repurpose it and all that stuff. You could literally follow through step by step and go on and create your own content and you can actually start becoming relevant and become a thought leader just from this episode alone. And of course, reaching great heights in your field, you know, you're going to rely on the quality of your content. We're not saying publish every single day mediocre stuff, you know. You need to make an effort to follow these and other tips, um, uh, you know, just so that your efforts are not in vain. Do you know what I mean? And, and then you need to be showcasing to people that, yes, you're worth their time because time, money, and effort are now scarce um, resources. Everything is out there just trying to grab your prospect's time. So you want to be finding worthy content which actually addresses and has you've done your due diligence, you know, to put your education and your expertise around the topic. However, just be aware that your information always needs to be valuable and helpful for your audience. Because if you're not helping people, why should they return, um, you know, the favor with their attention? Because human beings operate from uh, reciprocity okay where if you scratch my back i scratch yours too so the more you put content out there you're giving people ammunition for when somebody asks them um how they can solve a problem they put across your content your post or something that you would have put together to whoever wants um to be helped with that you know and one other thing that can actually help you is to work with other experts you know, you could interview people, you could collaborate with other experts in the field, and it will actually help you cross-pollinate audiences. I'll tell you something. When I was getting started, the one thing that actually put me on the map was I was interviewing people that had already made it in my industry, okay? So naturally, you start um, borrowing their authority, you start borrowing their audiences, and then, you know, when, when you interview someone, People who already follow that person transfer that authority that they already have on the person you're interviewing. And if you're just starting out, guess what that does to you? It actually just puts you at the same level because people like us do things like this. All right. So you want to be making sure that you, you are associating with those that have already made it or people that have an audience so that you can also borrow their authority and borrow their audience because it sucks to start from the bottom. You know, but there's another vital reason for you to actually surround yourself with like-minded people because, hey, you are the average of the five people you spend most of the time with. So you want to be also being around these, you know, spheres of influence. I'm not talking about the influencers on Instagram that are walking around half naked. No, no, no. I'm talking about the well-known names in your industry that will help you expand your reach. And once you're there, try and be seen at least sharing your expertise in, um, you know, public settings, you know, like speaking. Maybe these days there's not going to be a lot of live events, but become a speaker. You know, yes, I know the pandemic might have shut down a lot of um, stages and people can't speak, but you can also do Zoom setups where you can speak to, and that also makes you um, leverage geography because anyone can log in from anywhere in the world. I know the pandemic shutdown told us that public speaking didn't necessarily have to be an event, um, you know, you know, in a center full of people, whether it's online or in person, speaking to the masses and disseminating your wisdom is a tried and true way to propel your thought leader status. We are genetically wired to listen to people that have authority. 
So that's where you want to be, especially if you're a coach or consultant that really wants to make a mark, you know, in your industry. And then once and once you're in that space and doing all of those things, be a mentor for those that are below you. Okay. When I was growing up, we, um, you know, in the bathrooms where we would go to, you know, even in public spaces or in, in schools, they would be a sign that says, leave this place better than you found it you know and i've taken that to heart all right so if you're not going to be helping others uh, be do and have a happier existence along the way then you're doing the world a disservice try and find people that you can mentor and if you're a little bit older find people that you can that can reverse mentor you as well because there's some younger people that can teach you a lot of things about technology and social media that you might not be aware of. And you can then teach them the intricacies of uh, being in business and the partnership will create amazing results. You know, because mentoring is a win-win uh, agreement. People who have mentors tend to thrive, you know, from the knowledge sharing relationship that they both have. The younger person is gaining, you know, insights and a, a, a shorter learning curve. And you are also catching up to the technology that you might have missed out because you were not born with um, an iPhone in your hands like the kids of these days. All right. So, you know, the mentors themselves also benefit from this connection and you're gaining new perspectives and fresh ideas on how to tackle and do certain things. Because if you're failing to grow your business Albert Einstein mentioned that the thinking that got us here is not the same thinking that is going to get us out of this problem. So part of building your thought leadership status should also include having um, either a mentor or a mentee and then mentoring others in your space as well. You want others to say, hey, because of Prosper, because of Sally, because of Claudia, I did not give up. Wouldn't that be nice? So if you want to be known as an expert in your field, I know it's a worthwhile goal, but it's also a life-changing journey. You know, the best thought leaders are devoted and they're passionate about their topic with an overall purpose to actually help others where they actually shine. Like, seriously, I viscerally believe that you are meant to live a happier existence. And I know that, you know, you can actually grow your business and become one of the biggest players um, you know, in your industry. But remember, at the end of the, uh, the day, your real goal is to help your clients. And my goal is to help you succeed so that you too can have a, a business that's profitable and enjoyable, okay? I want you to maybe book a free consultation um, with me because I want to show you how to get high ticket leads on autopilot using our online prosperity method. And this method is just a simple system that I also developed by throwing away you know, what I thought I knew, you know, as a marketer's rule book. And now I've scaled my business because the things that I've told you on growing your own personal brand and thought leadership are the things that I'm going to be telling you um, or teaching you in the online prosperity method. So the message or the email that came with this podcast, there's a link on there livelongdigital.com.au forward slash OPB. Just click that link and I'm going to show you how to use this system to skyrocket your growth in your service business. I really want you to get consulting and coaching and small business clients fast, even if no one has ever heard of you. Come on, let's get started. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.